Hey guys, today we are going to look at applications of linear equations. We're going to answer the question, how do I write linear equations in various forms from word problems? So whenever you're given a word problem, you need to determine what information is given to you, and then that will determine what form of the linear equation that you will write it in. So we're going to go through each form of linear equations and talk about when it's best to use that. So let's start with slope-intercept form. Linear equations are best written in y equals mx plus b when there is a slope or rate of change, which would be m, and an initial amount, b, given. So when they give you m and b, it's best to write it in slope-intercept form. Then standard form. Linear equations are best written in standard form when there are two rates for two different variables. With this type of problem, it's especially important to define the variables so that x and y are representing the same thing in both equations. And then another form of equation we've learned about is point-slope form. Linear equations are best written in point-slope form when you're given a slope or rate of change and a point that is not the starting point. So slope-intercept form and point-slope form are both going to give you a slope or rate of change. In slope-intercept form, it'll be the initial amount. In point-slope form, it'll just be another point. And then sometimes you will be given two points. When given two sets of information, it's best to make a table and find the slope. And then after we have the slope and a point, we can write the equation either in slope-intercept form or point-slope form. So let's look at number one. It says Breiker is spending an average of $9 per day sounds like a rate. After four days, he has $121 left. Write a linear equation and solve to determine how much money Breiker will have left after seven days. So let's start with the rate. He is spending $9 a day. So that would be negative nine. And then they told us that after four days he has $121 left. So that sounds like a point for 121, but it is not the starting point. So we have a slope and a point. So I'm going to write this one in point slope form, which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So it'll be y minus 121 equals negative 9 times x minus 4. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and convert this to slope-intercept form because they are also wanting us to solve something which is usually easier in slope-intercept form. So I get y minus 121 equals negative 9x plus 36. And then we're going to add 121. And we get y equals negative 9x and then 36 plus 121 is 157. Okay, so there is the equation. And remember, he was spending $9 per day. So X is the number of days, and they want us to determine how much money he will have left after seven days. So they want us to input X equals seven into our equation to figure out how much money he'll have left after seven days. So it'll be Y equals negative nine times seven plus 157. So negative nine times seven plus 157. After seven days, he would have $94 left. All right, number two, an airplane with no fuel weighs 2,575 pounds. That sounds like an initial value to me. No fuel weighs 2,575 pounds. Then it says each gallon of gasoline added to the fuel tank weighs six pounds. That sounds like a rate to me. Each gallon of gasoline added to the fuel tank weighs six pounds. 
Write and solve a linear equation to determine how much the plane will weigh after it has been filled up with 56 gallons of fuel. So we are given an initial value, B, and the slope, the rate of change. So I'm going to write this in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So it would be y equals 6x for 6 pounds for each gallon of fuel, and it already weighs 2,575 pounds. So there is the equation. Now it wants us to determine how much the plane will weigh after it has been filled up with 56 gallons of fuel. That is an x value that they gave us because it is six gallons or six pounds for each gallon. So to figure out how much it'll weigh, I'm just going to plug in 56 for x. So six times 56 plus 2575 is 2,000. Oh, it's not money, it's pounds. It would be 2,911 pounds. after 56 gallons of fuel. All right, let's look at number three. David is buying hamburgers and chicken for a party. The hamburgers cost $2.75 per pound and the chicken costs $3.50 per pound. If David has $75 to spend, write and solve a linear equation to find how many pounds of chicken David can afford if he buys 12 pounds of hamburger. So I have two rates here. I have the hamburger and how much it costs and the chicken and how much it costs. So this is gonna be best in standard form ax plus by equals c since i have two rates for the hamburger and the chicken so let's go ahead and define the variables so we don't get them mixed up i'm going to let x be the pounds of hamburger and then that will make y the pounds of chicken so it says hamburgers cost $2.75 per pound. So that would be $2.75x plus chicken costs $3.50 per pound. So that would be $3.50y and he has $75 to spend. So there is our equation to represent this situation. Then it says, write and solve a linear equation to find how many pounds of chicken can he afford? So we're going to be looking for Y if he buys 12 pounds of hamburger and they gave us X because X was the pounds of hamburger. So all I'm going to do is plug in 12 for X and then I'll solve for Y. So it'll be 275 times 12 for 12 pounds of hamburger plus 350Y equals 75. So first thing I need to do is simplify. I need to do 275 times 12. And I get 33. So 33 plus 350y equals 75. And then I'm going to subtract 33. And 75 minus 33 is 42. So I get 350y equals 42, and then we're going to divide by 350, and 42 divided by 350 is 12. So that means that David could buy 12 pounds of chicken. All right, last one, number four. Dylan and Ethan are buying tickets for a space center online. They pay a cost per ticket plus a processing fee. Dylan buys four tickets for $72 and Ethan buys six tickets for $102. Write and solve a linear equation to determine how much it would cost to buy 11 tickets. So it seems like they gave us two sets of information here. David buys four tickets for, or Dylan buys four tickets for $72 and Ethan buys six tickets for $102. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a table and X is going to be the tickets because that will determine Y the cost. 
So Dylan buys four tickets for $72 and Ethan buys six tickets for $102. So I need to write an equation and the first thing I need to do to write an equation is get the slope. So I'm going to label these x1, y1, x2, y2 and I'm going to plug into slope formula. y2 minus y1 would be 102 minus 72 all over x2 minus x1, 6 minus 4. So 102 minus 72 is 30, and 6 minus 4 is 2, so the slope is 15. So I have the slope, and I have two points. I'm going to choose one of the points to write the equation. I'm just going to use the first one. And you can put, solve for b in slope intercept form. I'm going to use point slope form though. So you have two options there, slope intercept form and solve for b or point slope form. I'm just using point slope form. So now I'm going to plug in the point I chose. So y minus 72 equals 15 times x minus 4. And I need to distribute. So I get y minus 72 equals 15x minus 60. And then we're going to add 72, and I get y equals 15x plus 12. So there is the equation, y equals 15x minus 12. And they want us to write and solve a linear equation to determine how much it would cost to buy 11 tickets. So they just want us to substitute in x to determine the total cost y. So it'll be 15 times 11 plus 12 and 15 times 11 plus 12 is $177 for 11 tickets.